Hey everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do competitor analysis in SEMrush. So if you're looking to take your website to the next level through smart competitor analysis and research, then you'll definitely want to stick around for today's video. I'm going to walk you through an incredibly practical step-by-step -step process for using the powerful SEMrush tool to reverse engineer your competitor's content strategy. For this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a SEMrush account set up and ready to go. But if not, then no worries at all. You can use our special link in the description box down below and you will get your own free trial with SEMrush. You will have plenty of time to properly test the platform out and see what value it provides for you. Moving on, let's navigate to the domain overview section. You can do that using the sidebar menu. And this is where we will get our very first big picture read on any competitor site. For our example today, let's take a look at this site right here. And as we pull it up in SEMrush, we can see right away that it's an entirely informational website focused on covering most common questions people have about the game of basketball. So once you've done the search with SEMrush, you will land on this page right here. And the very first thing that you should notice is the page authority score. And this essentially shows just how strong this website is in this particular niche. And it should give you a pretty good indication about whether you can outrank them or not. So 56 in this case is actually a pretty strong number and it wouldn't be that easy to outrank them. It certainly is not something that's extremely hard like an authority score above 80, but 56 does indicate a pretty strong authority score. As for the organic search traffic, this should be an indicator about how much meaningful traffic this website gathers. So in this case, Samrush is guessing that this website is getting 11.5 thousand monthly searches and the backlinks indicate how many websites refer back to this website. So again, in this case, about 350 websites would link you back to BreakthroughBasketball.com. So these initial tabs or numbers should give you a pretty clear indication on whether you stand a chance of outranking them or not. For example, if I were to search for the NBA.com, then you would see that they have a whopping authority score of 94. They get around 75 million organic search traffic. And at that point, if I were to start a basketball channel or niche website, then it would be nearly impossible to outrank them. And that's entirely based on their organic keywords. And that's why it would be much easier to outrank a website with a lower authority score on their own keywords. So based on these numbers, it seems like BreakthroughBasketball.com is a reasonable competitor for most brand new sites that try and compete with. They already have built up some authority, get decent traffic, but likely don't have so much strength built up that it would be impossible to eventually surpass them with the right strategy, like NBA.com for example. To get a true feel for what's actually working well and driving results for this specific competitor, we'll want to study their top performing pages that are pulling in that organic traffic from Google. So over in the organic research section, go ahead and expand out that pages report and then select view details button underneath it. And from here, we want to click on the pages tab, and then you will be shown the full list of ranking pages for this domain. But you can quickly sort things by traffic percentage from highest to lowest. And this shows us SEMrush's estimated percentage of the overall domain's total traffic each page is driving in. I typically advise focusing in on those top five traffic pages to start. These are the real traffic workhorses and content assets that we want to thoroughly analyze and reverse engineer. So as you can see for BreakthroughBasketball.com, the top performing pages are camps, drills or basketball drills, kids, youth, defense, 3-2 zone, plays, and the homepage. So as you open up these top pages one by one in a new tab, you would start analyzing them on why they are performing very well. For example, these pages here are super detailed and in-depth, with the content easily going over 600 words or more on each topic to leave no stone unturned. And that extra depth is great for creating a quality content experience that fully answers whatever question the visitor had in mind. I also see that they are using a smart blend of supporting visuals and media-like graphics or videos to make the pages much more engaging than just walls of text. Additionally, these posts all follow on-page SEO best practices with their use of jump links, bulleted lists, subheaders, and more to break up that heavy content into much more easily skimmable chunks. And this will result in a vastly improved user experience compared to most of the thin, keyword-stuffed content that you still see out there today. You would also notice that they are doing a great job internally linking between the posts as well. So for example, if one article mentions a particular position like defense, they will smartly link over to their dedicated explainer post on that specific position. This helps reinforce their topical relevance on that core topic while passing along some important authority signals. It's smart to interlink like that, which helps stitch together comprehensively covered topics. It's definitely something that you would want to replicate if you're trying to rank up for these words. 
Moving on from the actual post analysis, let's take a look at the backlinks each of these top pages has racked up from other sites. Sometimes high rankings come down largely to earning more authoritative backlink strength through quality links. So for this website, for example, as I can see, their top performing backlinks is actually how do you try out for the NFL or entertaining talent show ideas for kids, teaching expertise, my sports space, and so on. So between picking apart the content formats and on-page optimizations being used, Seeing their smart internal linking structure in action and gaining visibility into which specific topics seem to be earning the most authoritative backlinks, we are getting a pretty clear picture of what an effective SEO content strategy could look like when trying to compete in this niche. So you'll definitely want to model and test out similar tactics with your own content. But before you build out the actual content plan, it's time to dive into the keyword research side of things. With a solid understanding now of the top pages earning our competitor meaningful organic traffic, it's time to look into the actual keyword footprint that this site is targeting in Google. And by reverse engineering their visible keyword strategy, we can start drawing a clear roadmap. So over in the positions report under Simrush's organic research data, I always advise filtering the keywords shown right off the bat. And the best filter to apply is restricting things to only keywords ranking in positions one through five in Google. Those are obviously the placements driving the bulk of the actual traffic, so they are what you care about the most. For newer websites, the set of filters that you will want to use are, for example, low and narrower search volumes, usually maximum of 500 to 1000 monthly searches, or easy low competition keyword difficulties scoring of 30 or lower as baseline. And by filtering with these restrictions first, you'll be able to identify the low hanging fruit keywords that a brand new site could reasonably have a shot at ranking for at least initially. So for the site right here with these filters applied, Semrush is showing these keywords that meet the criteria. And some examples of these are more attainable terms that they are ranking for. One of the best ways to approach this list is looking for any natural patterns or topic buckets that emerge. And that allows you to start mapping out full content hubs targeting specific subtopics and angles within the broader niche. So as I review the list, I can start grouping these keywords into main content categories like basketball definitions and terminology, frequently asked beginner questions, formation and positioning guides, and others. And that is much better in my opinion than randomly targeting keywords. We can plan out comprehensively clustered content hubs that fully cover each one of those individual angles or any demand areas. Much smarter, more efficient strategic approach. Taking the time to thoroughly review their visible keyword strategy like this allows us to very literally reverse engineer our own sustainable ROI positive content plan based on what's proven to work in this niche already. And such a smarter, more strategic distribution of your content resources than throwing randomized keywords at the wall to see what might stick. And that will be all on today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know your own thoughts in the comment section down below and whether you have any other questions. If you found today's video to be helpful or informative to watch, then give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any follow-up content that we can make related to this one.